and great in the postseason. 929 OPS back in 2019. He took Cole deep twice, Kershaw, yeah. Verlander. I mean, this is a guy, whoever's going to get on ball, he's a guy who's proven in the postseason. It's the, it's the number one trade trip on the market, and whoever gets them, they're going to tilt the field mm -hmm. in their favor. When you look at Juan Soto and what he adds to your lineup, it's a left-handed bat that hits good pitching. So when you look at his numbers, I'm not worried about the current numbers yeah. because I, I, I look at guys, and there's one thing you can't quantify, and that's how another person is feeling. And Juan Soto is showing up each and every day with the Washington Nationals. You had all the contract situation. Now you got the trades swirling around his head. He has not had a chance to just come to the ballpark and play baseball. So imagine him, one, getting – all the trade rumors behind him. The contract negotiation falls by the wayside because you're entering a pennant race, and now what becomes prominent is winning another chip. And you're adding a guy who's already been to the promised land and has won a championship, and Juan Soto is a winner, and he wants nothing more but to get back into that spotlight. And we look at now, so okay, which team needs him the most? To me, Case, it's a no-brainer. Right. Cards, Dodgers, Padres, Padres. They need a bat. There's no doubt about it. We're still waiting for Tatis, hopefully back sooner rather than later. Yeah. But Chavez's been a one-man band. They get Soto, they feel like a different team. It's a no-brainer because that lineup, that lineup needs a big bat. They need to, you know, you look at the Jeez. outfield production. That is that's that's not gonna win your World Series. No. You know, that and, and and the Padres have been putting pieces together to try and win that World Series, get to the postseason. But Juan Soto, like you said, if he goes into that lineup, all of a sudden they are exponentially better. So I think the Padres of all those teams have uh, need him the most. There's no doubt about it. I think if you're the Padres, I agree with you. The Padres need Juan Soto the most. But more importantly, when you see the Dodgers on that list, if you're the Padres, you just absolutely cannot let Juan Soto go to the Dodgers. So it's almost like you're getting him for your own offense, yes. but you're also playing <laughs> defense, defense. Yeah. so that he don't go to the yeah. Dodgers because yeah. if he lands in L.A., mm -hmm. it's, it's lights it's out. Over. Yeah. It's Kurt, lights out. Kurt. Kurt. And I think that's one of the reasons why. And A.J. Peller's always been very aggressive, right? He's willing to give up, apparently, three of his top five prospects. Go ahead. I'll give it what you want because yeah. he knows how important it is to get a guy like. Well, that. I think the biggest thing is too. Why, why do you have prospects? Why do you? Why do you go for this time? For this yeah. time. This is why. For this time to make the run. You go, you got Machado. You signed to teach. You, you know you you just locked up Musgrove. All these guys. Yes. Why do you have prospects? You have prospects for this time to go get a guy like Juan Soto yeah. or a, a big bat that can get you to where you want to go. And here's the beauty of it: when you trade prospects. Yes, we can't see into the future and know what those prospects are going to be. But when you start to look at your roster and you have this star-studded roster, let's just say it all falls apart. Mm. Like, San Diego went down this road before when they acquired Kimball and Upton and that whole crew. It did not work out. What did they do? They flipped those guys and restocked their farm system. That put them back in position to hit the reset button, and now they find themselves on the brink of the postseason. But if you're the Padres, you have to push all of your chips to the center of the table and say, this is the best chance we have, and we're going for it. And this is a guy, too, you're probably not going to sign him on the free agent market, but you do have control of him for three postseasons. If you get a guy like this for three postseasons, you lock in Juan Soto. Just think right now, two 23-year-olds, Tatis and Soto, in your line. Oh, my. Thank you. It makes a manager look real smart. <laughs> real smart. Real smart. <laughs> Get Bo back in there. Exactly. You know what I mean? Bob Melvin, I love this move. Managers love these kinds of moves. <laughs> and for the Dodgers, again, just how much better. Just think of this lineup right now. Oh. They are. If you add Soto in there, Bo, it feels like it's lights out. It's, it's, I, I, I use the terminology like, like that. Look at that. Mookie, but, Soto, Trey, Freeman, <laughs> Will Smith, et cetera. It's it's one of those things. It's, you're going to have a lot of pitchers coming up with, um, you know, maybe maybe they go into COVID IL. Or, you know, they, they wake up, they have a, a scratchy throat. Right. Or me, my, my, my elbow is not feeling good because that is what you call murderer's row. You have Cody Bellinger, former MVP. He's in, he's hitting ninth yeah. in this lineup. It's crazy. Yes. I mean, geez. That, that's a pitcher's worst nightmare. And, and what you love about it, if you're the Dodgers, it's the balance of it. Right. You see the balance, left-right balance, and they can just strike you from so many different yeah. directions. There's nine guys in that lineup that can change the game with one swing. That's crazy. And we don't know now. Listen, the Cardinals get them. That changes that team. Obviously, you already have Arnauto and Goldschmidt. But to me, it feels like it's in the West. Preller and Freeman, those guys, when they really want to push for something, they're yeah. not going to get denied. But if you're the Washington Nationals, you're in the king position.